Chapters 13 through 16 of the Gospel according to Luke. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 13 through 16. Chapter 13 Just at that time people came to tell him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Do you suppose, he asked in reply, that those Galileans were worse sinners than the mass of the Galileans, because this happened to them? I tell you certainly not. On the contrary, if you are not penitent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen on whom the tower at Siloam fell, do you suppose they had failed in their duty more than all the rest of the people who live in Jerusalem? I tell you certainly not. On the contrary, if you do not repent, you will all perish just as they did. And he gave them the following parable. A man, he said, who had a fig tree growing in his garden came to look for fruit on it, and could find none. So he said to the gardener, See, this is the third year I have come to look for fruit on this fig tree and cannot find any. Cut it down. Why should so much ground be actually wasted? But the gardener pleaded, Leave it, sir, this year also, till I have dug round it and manured it. If after that it bears fruit, well and good. If it does not, then you shall cut it down. Once he was teaching on the Sabbath in one of the synagogues where a woman was present who for eighteen years had been a confirmed invalid. She was bent double and was unable to lift herself to her full height. But Jesus saw her, and calling to her, he said to her, Woman, you are free from your weakness. And he put his hands on her, and she immediately stood upright and began to give glory to God. Then the warden of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured her on a Sabbath, said to the crowd, There are six days in the week on which people ought to work. On those days, therefore, come and get yourselves cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord's reply to him was, Hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his bullock or his ass from the stall and lead him to water? And this woman, daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan had bound for no less than eighteen years, was she not to be loosed from this chain, because it is the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were ashamed, while the whole multitude was delighted at the many glorious things continually done by him. This prompted him to say, What is the kingdom of God like, and to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed which a man drops into the soil in his garden, and it grows and becomes a tree in whose branches the birds roost. And again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast which a woman takes and buries in a bushel of flour to work there till the whole is leavened. He was passing through town after town, and village after village, steadily proceeding towards Jerusalem, when some one asked him, Sir, are there but few who are to be saved? Strain every nerve to force your way in through the narrow gate, he answered, for multitudes, I tell you, will endeavor to find a way in, and will not succeed. As soon as the master of the house shall have risen and shut the door, and you have begun to stand outside and knock at the door and say, Sir, open the door for us. I do not know you, he answers. You are no friends of mine. Then you will plead, We have eaten and drunk in your company, and you have taught in our streets. But he will reply, I tell you that you are no friends of mine. Be gone from me, all of you, wrongdoers that you are. There will be the weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and yourselves being driven far away. They will come from east and west, from north and south, and will sit down at the banquet in the kingdom of God. And I tell you that some now last will then be first, and some now first will then be last. Just at that time there came some Pharisees who warned him, saying, 
Leave this place and continue your journey. Herod means to kill you. Go, he replied, and take this message to that fox. See, today and tomorrow I am driving out demons and effecting cures, and on the third day I finish my course. Yet I must continue my journey today and tomorrow and the day following, for it is not conceivable that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou who murderest the prophets and stonest those who have been sent to thee, how often have I desired to gather thy children, just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not come. See, your house is left to you. But I tell you that you will never see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 14 One day, it was a Sabbath, he was taking a meal at the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisee party while they were closely watching him. In front of him was a man suffering from dropsy. This led Jesus to ask the lawyers and Pharisees, Is it allowable to cure people on the Sabbath? They gave him no answer, so he took hold of the man, cured him, and sent him away. Then he turned to them and said, which of you shall have a child or an ox fall into a well on the sabbath day and will not immediately lift him out to this they could make no reply then when he noticed that the invited guests chose the best seats he used this as an illustration and said to them when any one invites you to a wedding banquet do not take the best seat lest perhaps some more honored guest than you may have been asked and the man who invited you both will come and will say to you make room for this guest and then you ashamed will move to the lowest place on the contrary when you are invited go and take the lowest place that when your host comes round he may say to you my friend come up higher this will be doing you honor in the presence of all the other guests for whoever uplifts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be uplifted also to his host who had invited him he said when you give a breakfast or a dinner, do not invite your friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors, lest perhaps they should invite you in return, and a requital be made you. But when you entertain, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they have no means of requiting you. But there will be requital for you at the resurrection of the righteous. After listening to this teaching, one of his fellow guests said to him, blessed is he who shall feast in god's kingdom a man once gave a great dinner replied jesus to which he invited a large number of guests at dinner time he sent his servant to announce to those who had been invited come for things are now ready but they all without exception began to excuse themselves the first told him i have purchased a piece of land and must of necessity go and look at it pray hold me excused a second pleaded I have bought five yoke of oxen, and am on my way to try them. Pray hold me excused. Another said, I am just married. It is impossible for me to come. So the servant came and brought these answers to his master, and they stirred his anger. Go out quickly, he said, into the streets of the city, the wide ones and the narrow. You will see poor men and crippled, blind, lame. Fetch them all in here. Soon the servant reported the result, saying, Sir, what you ordered is done, and there is room still. Go out, replied the master, to the high roads and hedgerows, and compel the people to come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you that not one of those who were invited shall taste my dinner. On his journey vast crowds attended him, towards whom he turned and said, if any one is coming to me who does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be a disciple of mine. No one who does not carry his own cross and come after me can be a disciple of mine. Which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not sit down first and calculate the cost, asking if he has the means to finish it? Lest perhaps, when he has laid the foundation and is unable to finish, all who see it shall begin to jeer at him, saying, This man began to build, but could not finish. Or what king, marching to encounter another king in war, does not first sit down and deliberate whether he is able with ten thousand men to meet the one who is advancing against him with twenty thousand? 
If not, while the other is still a long way off, he sends messengers and sues for peace. Just as no one of you who does not detach himself from all that belongs to him can be a disciple of mine. Salt is good, but if even the salt has become tasteless, what will you use to season it? Neither for land nor dunghill is it of any use. They throw it away. Listen, everyone who has ears to listen with. Chapter 15 Now the tax-gatherers and the notorious sinners were everywhere in the habit of coming close to him to listen to him, and this led the Pharisees and the scribes indignantly to complain, saying, He gives a welcome to notorious sinners, and joins them at their meals. So in figurative language he asked them, Which of you men, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in their pasture and go in search of the lost one till he finds it? And when he has found it, he lifts it on his shoulder, glad at heart. Then coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Congratulate me, for I have found my sheep, the one I had lost. I tell you that in the same way there will be rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner, more rejoicing than over ninety-nine blameless persons who have no need of repentance. Or what woman who has ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully till she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says, Congratulate me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. I tell you that in the same way there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one repentant sinner. He went on to say, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that comes to me. So he divided his wealth between them. No long time afterwards the younger son got all together and travelled to a distant country, where he wasted his money in debauchery and excess. At last, when he had spent everything, there came a terrible famine throughout that country, and he began to fill the pinch of want. So he went and hired himself to one of the inhabitants of that country, who sent him on to his farm to tend swine. And he longed to make a hearty meal of the pods the swine were eating, but no one gave him any. But on coming to himself he said, How many of my father's hired men have more bread than they want, while I here am dying of hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I no longer deserve to be called a son of yours. Treat me as one of your hired men. So he rose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and pitied him and ran and threw his arms round his neck and kissed him tenderly. Father, cried the son, I have sinned against heaven and before you. No longer do I deserve to be called a son of yours. But the father said to his servants, Fetch a good coat quickly, the best one, and put it on him, and bring a ring for his finger and shoes for his feet. Fetch the fat calf and kill it, and let us feast and enjoy ourselves. For my son here was dead, and has come to life again. He was lost, and has been found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was out on the farm, and when he returned and came near home, he heard music and dancing. Then he called one of the lads to him, and asked what all this meant. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has had the fat calf killed, because he has got him home safe and sound. Then he was angry, and would not go in. But his father came out and entreated him. All these years, replied the son, I have been slaving for you, and I have never at any time disobeyed any of your orders. And yet you have never given me so much as a kid for me to enjoy myself with my friends. But now that this son of yours is come, who has eaten up your property among his bad women, you have killed the fat calf for him. You, my dear son, said the father, are always with me, and all that is mine is also yours. We are bound to make merry and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead, and has come back to life. He was lost, and has been found. Chapter 16 He said also to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a steward, about whom a report was brought to him that he was wasting his property. 
he called him and said, What is this I hear about you? Render an account of your stewardship, for I cannot let you hold it any longer. Then the steward said within himself, What am I to do? For my master is taking away the stewardship from me. I am not strong enough for field labor. To beg I should be ashamed. I see what to do, in order that when I am discharged from the stewardship they may give me a home in their own houses. So he called all his master's debtors one by one, and asked the first, How much are you in debt to my master? A hundred firkins of oil, he replied. Here is your account, said the steward. Sit down quickly and change it into fifty firkins. To a second, he said, And how much do you owe? A hundred quarters of wheat, was the answer. Here is your account, said he. Change it into eighty quarters. And the master praised the dishonest steward for his shrewdness, for, in relation to their own contemporaries, the men of this age are shrewder than the sons of light. But I charge you, so to use the wealth which is ever tempting to dishonesty, as to win friends who, when it fails, shall welcome you to the tents that never perish. The man who is honest in a very small matter is honest in a great one also, and he who is dishonest in a very small matter is dishonest in a great one also. If therefore you have not proved yourselves faithful in dealing with the wealth that is tainted with fraud, who will entrust to you the true good? And if you have not been faithful in dealing with that which is not your own, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can be in bondage to two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will cling fast to one and scorn the other. You cannot be bond servants both of God and of gold. To all this the Pharisees listened, bitterly jeering at him, for they were lovers of money. You are they, he said to them, who boast of their own goodness before men, but God sees your hearts, for that which holds a proud position among men is detestable in God's sight. The law and the prophets continued until John came. From that time the good news of the kingdom of God has been spreading, and all classes have been forcing their way into it. But it is easier for earth and sky to pass away than for one smallest detail of the law to fall to the ground. Every man who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries her when so divorced from her husband commits adultery. There was once a rich man who habitually arrayed himself in purple and fine linen and enjoyed a splendid banquet every day, while at his outer door there lay a beggar, Lazarus by name, covered with sores and longing to make a full meal off the scraps flung on the floor from the rich man's table. Nay, the dogs, too, used to come and lick his sores. But in course of time the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died, and had a funeral. And in Hades, being in torment, he looked and saw Abraham in the far distance, and Lazarus resting in his arms. So he cried aloud and said, Father Abraham, take pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. Remember, my child, said Abraham, that you had all your good things during your lifetime, and that Lazarus in like manner had his bad things. But now and here he is receiving consolation, and you are in agony. And besides all this, a vast chasm is immovably fixed between us and you, put there in order that those who desire to cross from this side to you may not be able, nor any be able to cross over from your side to us. I entreat you then, father, said he, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him earnestly warn them, lest they also come to this place of torment. They have Moses and the prophets, replied Abraham. Let them hear them. No, Father Abraham, he pleaded, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. If they are deaf to Moses and the prophets, replied Abraham, they would not be led to believe even if someone should rise from the dead. The End of Chapters 13-16 through 16 of the Gospel According to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth Recording by Mark Penfold